Welcome to the Health Reflections podcast, a podcast dedicated to exploring the world of anti-cancer living and empowering you to take control of your health. I'm Finola, your host and guide on this transformative journey towards a vibrant and resilient life. Join me for solo episodes and conversations with wonderful guests. I am beyond excited that you're here, so let's dive in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Health Reflections podcast. Today, I want to talk about failing goals. Let's just have an honest chat about failing goals and how do we feel about this. I really wanted to talk about this because I think this topic can really affect anyone. You know, I think a lot a lot of people can relate mainly around New Year's when we're setting our New Year's resolution, we're setting our goals, we're just getting ready for the New Year, we're super motivated, we're just, you know, with the hype and we want to incorporate new things into our lives and apart from wanting it, we feel so ready for it. But then January comes and motivation is still there. We're all working like crazy on these new goals. We're feeling super good. We feel like we're going to achieve it. Some people do achieve it, but for a lot of us, we experience that by the end of Mid, maybe mid end February, like when March is arriving, we have already stopped. We have already given up. Seriously, whoever is listening to this, if you can relate to this feeling, just share it. You're not the only one that this happens to. And this is why I think this topic is so important. And I think it deserves a lot of awareness because before we dive in deep, There is nothing wrong with failing a goal. And in my opinion, there's not such thing as failing. Also, before diving in, you might have heard me saying that I always focus in living an anti-cancer lifestyle. And maybe your first thought when you click on this podcast is if you're focusing on living an anti-cancer lifestyle, why are you talking about goals and failing goals? I just want to share the concept anti-cancer mindset. So this mindset, you may already have it without thinking, oh, this is an anti-cancer mindset. And I'm not entirely sure if this is the definition by default of anti-cancer mindset. It is my... It's, it's my definition of it, let's say. So just in case anyone is new listening to this, living an anti-cancer lifestyle is my definition of living a healthy lifestyle. It's not only about trying to prevent cancer, but any disease out there. Um, just staying strong and being healthy overall. And this involves having an anti-cancer mindset, which it's a mindset based on a positive thinking. It's about having a mind and body connection. It's about practicing self-awareness. It's about observing ourselves and others with compassion, without judging and living in the present moment. And also always be open to learn new things and to be willing to take care of ourselves. So I love this. So this is why goals and failing goals and what that feeling may cause to us is so important to me and why I decided to create this podcast episode. I think when we set goals and it gets to a point where we give up, we automatically feel like a complete failure. And I think it's very easy to feel like we have let ourselves down. But... I don't see it like this. I think, and this is not always something very easy to do, I think this can be hard, but when you are working on a specific goal and it gets to a point where you give up, whatever reason, instead of automatically feel 
like you have let down yourself or like you're a complete failure I think what you what we should do because I'm also putting an enormous amount of effort into doing that instead of being like oh my god Finola you're not able to do anything is to evaluate what has happened from all of these experiences when we build our lives, when we set goals, when we accomplish them, when we don't accomplish them, we learn so much from these experiences. So honestly, we just have to sit and be like, what has happened? Why did I give up? When we try to evaluate and dig in deep into these situations, we learn about boundaries. We learn about our strengths. We learn about our weaknesses. We learn about the areas that need a little bit more practice. We gain a better understanding of what works and what doesn't work for us. Something that I think it's very important and maybe you can put it in a little posit, you know, put it in your mirror so that you can read it. <laughs> every now and then, is that not being able to accomplish a certain goal doesn't define your worth. Just because you didn't meet a specific goal doesn't mean you are a complete failure. It simply means you're human, like all of us. And as humans, we're bound to trip up occasionally. So the next time that Maybe you're not working on a goal. Maybe you're working on a project or I don't know, whatever it is that you're working on. Next time that you find yourself falling and giving up or maybe you didn't submit a project in the deadline, whatever it is, don't be too hard on yourself. Instead, take a breather, try to assess what happened, what got in your way, why didn't it go as planned and use those lessons for the next time that you plan on working on the next thing. Because the fact that you didn't achieve a certain goal or a certain project, um, I'm not going to use the word fail here, so I'm gonna say the next time that you don't achieve a goal or a project or whatever it is that you're working on, try to remember that it's not that you didn't succeed. It's just part of the process. Maybe that giving up moment was meant to happen so that you could learn something to improve and be better the next time. Try to have a positive mindset. And I know this is very, very hard to do at times. I do it. And sometimes you just need a big cry, feel a little bad, but then just try to get back up. And I don't mean like get back up and start working like crazy into trying to achieve that goal. I mean like, okay, I'm going to start loving myself, not pushing myself too hard. Let's try to understand what happened, why I didn't achieve this project that I was working on so that I can be better. And that's it. Okay, now I want to take a little bit of time into trying to understand the word fail. Because when we use the word fail... We normally use it with a sense of finality, as if it is the end of the road. But as I just mentioned, in other words, failing doesn't mean endpoint. It's just a bend on the road or a detour on your journey. And it got me a lot of time to see it that way. And if I'm completely honest, it was thanks to my therapist that I have this mindset. I mean, thanks to my therapist and thanks to the work that I put because yes, I went to therapy and yes, my therapist helped me a lot. But at the end of the day, I was the one doing the homework that my therapist sent me so that I could be better. And this mindset is thanks to this to the sessions with him and the work that I put. This is actual work that you dedicate into believing in yourself and be there for yourself because it's really important not only to work on your life and to work on the goals that you want to achieve, but just for your health, for your mental health and how you feel about yourself. The way we talk to ourselves, it's so important. And I'm just going to go back to the topic because if not, I could go 
on and on talking about this. So just remember that whenever we don't hit a specific goal, this is just a reminder that we're presented with an opportunity to grow, adapt, and improve. And I really like remembering how water behaves and try to copy it and be inspired by it. But you see, when water, you know, like water in a bottle or when you're putting it into a glass or the rivers, how they spread into even smaller rivers, you know, the way water moves, it's always adapting to the space that it has and the direction that it's given. And I am always so inspired by this. Where did I hear this? I don't remember. It was... Uh, what was it? I heard it from one of my favorite YouTubers, but at this point I have so many that I'm having struggled to remember who it was. I don't know if it was Lavender or Jules Acre. Who? I don't, anyway. I don't know where I heard it. It's not from me, but I love that and I get inspired so, t so many times and I try to use it as a reminder. Okay, I think we have talked enough about what is failure, how do we feel with failing goals and, you know, reminding ourselves that, in fact, we're not failing goals. We just need to reassess and evaluate the whole thing. Now, let's dive in into the small steps that we can do when we're in the situation of feeling like this, when we didn't achieve a goal. First of all, and I think this is the most important, acknowledge your feelings. Your feelings, how you're feeling, this is completely valid. I think it's completely normal and completely okay to feel disappointed or upset when things do not go as planned. This happens a lot to me. I am such a planner. People who follow me, you know this. I love to plan my days. I love to plan my PhD work, I love to plan my business, I love to plan when I'm going to work out, I love to plan when I'm going to meet my friends. I am a planner. And when things don't go as planned, it is such a struggle to not feel disappointed or to not feel like, oh my god, I wasted my time. And these feelings are completely valid and it's completely okay to just sit and acknowledge how you're feeling. I think this is just a natural part of life. And it's also crucial to allow ourselves to experience these feelings. And this is somehow how we get to know ourselves and how we behave and how we tend to react to certain situations. Okay, the next thing, after acknowledging these feelings and small bonus here, I would add a tiny meditation session. Well, I mean, if you have been doing meditation for a very long time, I'm pretty sure that you don't mind doing a long session, like 20, 30 minutes meditation. There are longer than this. But for me personally, when it goes past 40, 45 minutes of meditation, I tend to fall asleep. <laughs> when I went just to understand my feelings and see how I'm doing. Sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming to have a lot of feelings, you know, in that moment and trying to evaluate them or just listen to them. I talked about this in the episode of slow living. When we're constantly doing things and, you know, working in our life, we tend to think that the way we um, relax is by scrolling on social media or watching Netflix. And this is just a way of distracting our mind. But then when you switch off, your thoughts and your feelings are still there. So what happens when we're not used to doing this practice of listening to our feelings and, you know, trying to understand, we can get overwhelmed. And this has happened to me even now that I love being alone and spending some time for myself and listening to my feelings, sometimes I get very anxious because I'm feeling too many things at the same time. So in this moment, this small tip here is just to take a small guided meditation, I don't know, maybe five to ten minutes to just breathe in 
relax and everything is okay and everything is going to be okay and also it's okay not to be okay. So the next step is to reflect on what has happened. So this is when you take some time into thinking why you didn't meet your goal. You can take a piece of paper and just brain up anything that pops in your head. And you can you don't have to do it in one single moment. You can just maybe start, take that piece of paper, start writing why you think you didn't achieve that goal. And when you don't think anything else pops in your mind, just go to something else. Another thought is going to pop up. And then if it happens, just come back to your paper and write it down. And something that I want to point here, if you have watched my live recent videos, I'm pretty sure that you know what I'm about to mention, but take a time here to try to understand if you really want to achieve that specific goal. Because sometimes it happens, and this is why I think that at the time of setting goals, we should understand why we want a certain goal. Because when we're working on a specific goal, sometimes it happens that we really don't want that goal. So deep down, we're not going to make the time to work on that goal. It's logic. Like, you really don't want it. You just don't know that you don't want it. You think you want it. Maybe you got influenced by social media. Maybe you saw that a certain goal worked very well by to another person. But maybe it's not what you want. So I think it's really important to try and understand why you chose that goal to work on and to incorporate it in your life. Now, careful here because you may think, oh yeah, so that's it. That's why I failed in this goal. That's why I didn't achieve this goal. It's just because I don't want it. Careful. Maybe it can happen. Maybe you really want to work on that goal, but you just don't want to give it too much thought. And just saying that you're not aligned to that goal is the easy journey and you're giving up. So careful. Really try to be as honest as you can. I think you can ask questions like, was it an unrealistic way of achieving that goal? Did any unexpected events occur? Maybe something you didn't expect it that just popped out out of nowhere. So it took time from you to actually achieve your goal. Understanding why things didn't work out as planned can provide valuable insights into what you might do differently next time. Okay, the next step, and we have already talked a little bit about this, but just as a reminder, reframe your perspective. This is very important. Instead of seeing the situation as a failure, view it as a learning opportunity. You can ask yourself, since we are in this moment of reflecting what has happened, maybe you can take this time into asking yourself, what has this taught you? What has this experience told you? How has it helped you grow? And something that you can do here is try and make a list of the goals that you have achieved in the past and try and assess that. Try to evaluate that. Why did you achieve those goals? What happened? Were they super motivating? Did you have a clear why on why you wanted those goals in your life? Did you have a plan? Did you go with the flow? Was it just pure luck or that nothing came up in the middle so you were able to focus on that what was it try to evaluate why you achieved those goals and compare it to the ones that you haven't achieved and see what's happening between them why one goal yes and the other one no okay the next step is to work on your new plan of action so maybe here you want to make a space for new goals, maybe this reflection, this evaluation of what happened. And also from the moment that you set a specific goal up to now, maybe you realize other goals that you want to work on. So I would make a list with the goals that you want to work on 
plus the goals that haven't worked that you still want to work on and try to order them by priority. This could be because you have a specific date that you want to achieve one or maybe you're working on health goals or maybe by health, maybe you have some issue. Try to order them in by priority. And when designing your new plan of action, it's very important to take the lessons, to learn from your mistakes. So everything that you evaluated and you're reflecting on and trying to understand why a specific goal didn't work, try to take that and take it into consideration when you're creating your next plan of action. Having a plan can provide a sense of direction and make your goals seem more attainable. And since we're designing this plan of action, a little tip here, try to make it fun. The more fun you make a goal, the more you will want to work on that goal. And also try to make it easy for yourself because Working on a goal by itself is extremely hard because if you're working on a specific goal, it's because you are not used to it yet. So you're going to work on making your body used to a new goal, new habit, new whatever that you don't do on a regular basis. So that itself is hard. And then depending on what goal you're working, maybe it's a very hard goal. So try to make it easy. And I'm going to make examples of my own that if you have been following me for a while, you know them by heart already. First of all, for me, it's super important that I have my morning immune shot. And this is just ginger, turmeric, lemon, and water. First thing in the morning. I am super sleepy in the morning. I am a zombie. I don't work. My brain is not functionable. So the probability of me getting up and be like, oh, I really feel like having my morning shot. So I'm just going to prepare it. Cut the lemon, cut the ginger, mix everything and then drink it. No. Me, personally, I don't work like that. I will see that as an enormous amount of work first thing in the morning and I will not want to do it. So what I do is prepare it in advance. So I prepare the mix and I then put it in a silicon ice tray, put it in the freezer. So the only thing that I have to do that morning is just take the little cube out, put it into a glass and add some water. That's it. Easy. <laughs> Another example. I want to go to work out in the morning. Working out in the morning is extremely important to me. The days that I work out in the mornings, my day go very different from the ones that I don't work out in the morning. Now, because I have I have mentioned this several times, I'm doing a PhD and doing a PhD means being in a constant roller coaster, you know, of ups and downs. And sometimes I'm doing my routine super good and no effort is needed because I'm in the flow and I love it and I'm super happy but others I'm really struggling with my work and that really affects me and I think anyone here can relate with that. So of course when I'm struggling with my work I don't want to go to work out in the morning. I just want to be in bed and stay there and hide from the world. So what I do First of all, I joined a fitness studio that if you don't cancel before eight hours, you will get charged. So that is the first motivation of getting me going to the class. Second, I prepare my workout clothes the night before. I leave it laid out perfectly pretty, like everything. The socks, the sports bra, the leggings trainers, everything. And I even put my um, robe because right now it's really, really cold in the morning so that, okay, I'm wearing my workout clothes, but I'm a little bit comfy for a little bit until I have to get going. So yeah, this is what I mean when you should try and make it easy and fun for you 
to increase your motivation and the chances of working on the goal that you're working. Okay, another thing is to seek for support. And this is not just for accountability when working on a goal. Maybe you want to talk with someone that you trust. It could be a friend, a family member, a therapist, to understand what happened. Maybe you're not motivated overall. Sometimes this type of reflections and this type of self-assessments can be really hard and it's better to seek for help. And there's nothing wrong with doing this. I think this is actually great. Because I have been to therapy and I still go whenever I need to, I am able to understand things that maybe by on my own I wouldn't have ever thought Sometimes we just feel, oh, I'm just very stressed because of work, of course. Or, oh yeah, I'm just super tired because this week has been, what a week. Which, yes, it can be true. But sometimes there's something behind it that we're not even aware that is triggering us feeling like that. And the best way to assess it and discover what is happening is going to therapy. I think therapy is for everyone and everyone should do therapy at some point in their life because it's life-changing. So yeah, seek for support. Friend, family, whoever you want, they can give you a fresh perspective. They can provide encouragement. They can give you advice. And also you can seek for support in terms of accountability. Maybe you don't feel like doing a goal alone and you just want to do it with someone. I am doing that. I don't know if she's listening to this, but I have a wonderful friend that comes with me every Thursday to a workout class that is a bit scary because it's quite intense. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have gone already five weeks in a row. And it's because of this accountability that I have with this beautiful and wonderful friend. So if you're listening, thank you. Love you. Okay, and last but not least, practice self-care. Practice self-love. And not only when you find yourself in a situation like this where you're feeling like a failure, try to practice it on a daily basis. Even the days that you're feeling amazing and you feel like you're living the best life ever, Practice self-love and self-care. It's extremely important to take care of yourself. And I always mention this. If you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to work on the things that you want to work? And it's not just having a hot bath or practicing yoga, which I love and I'm all in for, or, you know, okay, today's self-care session is going to be a full skincare routine. It's not only that. Self-care and self-love goes beyond this. This are great and this are part of my self-care routine, but self-care and self-love practices is how you speak to yourself how you treat yourself. Have you ever had the situation where, I don't know, you drop a pen or you drop a glass, whatever, and you tell yourself, how stupid are you? You need to change that. You cannot talk to you that way. You may think it's nonsense, but your brain is constantly listening to what you're telling yourself. And without noticing, you're telling your brain to believe that. Change the way you speak to yourself. Change the way you treat yourself. How you look to yourself when you look in the mirror. It's This topic is very hard and I'm not going to dive in deep because we can be here forever. But honestly, I'm telling you the way we speak to ourselves and we treat ourselves has a huge impact in our overall well-being. And apart from this, self-care and self-love, it's about the food that we eat, it's about the exercise routine that we have, it's about how much we sleep, not only how much we sleep, but the quality of our sleep. It's about scheduling time in the day to take care of yourself, you know, to just sit there and relax, doing things that bring you joy, whether it is with a Netflix show, with the, whatever it is, with a book, to read it, journaling, try to understand your feelings on a daily basis, 
small practices that you can incorporate into, into your daily life. Self-care and self-love are essential for maintaining a physical and a mental health. And this can actually help us stay focused and motivated into achieving our goals. So yeah, I think we have covered everything important regarding like the honest chat that I wanted to have with you guys today about failing goals. I really hope that you liked it. Um, experiences are more than welcome. Um, as a reminder, I have a Discord server for our lovely community, Healthy Life Dreamers. If you would like, you know, support and a place to work on your journey with the beautiful people, then we're there. So yeah, I'm going to end the episode here. I really hope that you liked it. And I'll see you in the next one. That's it for today's episode of the Health Reflections podcast. If you would like to have more information, you can check out the show notes or go to the podcast section at finolamaestro.com. I hope this episode was valuable to you and inspired and empowered you into taking action. A reminder that we have a lovely community space called Healthy Life Dreamers where we share experiences and support each other on this journey. I would love it if you would help me spread the word by leaving a review or sharing the podcast with anyone you think might need it. Thank you so much for being here today. See you in the next one.